Hello, my name is Steve Batchel and I'm here to talk about Earth Optimism. I've been working with the World Land Trust as a charity for I think about 10 years now and the things that we have as a charity achieved are I think great cause for hope. More than 2 million acres of forest around the world has been protected for the future. In itself, that is a fantastic offset for, uh, for carbon gases and for carbon use. But far more than that is it is a repository of biodiversity for all of the animals that live there. So I did a big fundraise in Borneo and the forest that we managed to purchase and protect for all time is itself a home for orangutans, clouded leopards, pygmy elephants and all of the other various animals that rely on those forests. This is not the only cause we have for optimism in conservation. I think that right now we stand at a period of time when youth activism is stronger than it has ever been before. A new wave of young people are waking up to the fact that they have the opportunity to make the world a better place. They are shouting about uh, the fact that they want to make this planet better and that it's our responsibility to do just that. Certainly my generation has had nothing like that kind of overpowering ambition to do better and I think that now there is a sense that a sea change is upon us and that we are being swept along by this great tide of wanting to change and improve this magical planet that we live on. So there is great cause for optimism and I think that you and each and every one of us can be a part of it. This is the Atlantic forest of Brazil, or to be more accurate, a tiny fragment of what's left of it. Reduced to just 7% of its original size, the last pockets like this one are incredibly important. And in a world where the pressures on the land are unprecedented, if we're not actively looking after them ourselves, we really ought to hope someone is doing it for us. That's why I want to introduce you to Regua, a forest reserve just 100 kilometers from Rio that's protecting the incredibly intricate and complex ecosystem that is a rainforest. Every plant and creature here is linked, connected. There are thousands of species we're still yet to discover, and together they all make up the living, breathing, pulsating forest. To manage a complicated landscape like this requires some special people and I'd like you to meet Raquel and Nicholas Locke. They've dedicated their lives to looking after nature and their goodwill and enthusiasm is contagious. Which is just as well as they can't do it alone. Let's start with the scientists. In order to protect a forest, you need to know what's in it and how it works. The students from Rio are here all the time, counting, measuring and observing. Knowledge is power, so the researchers are proving the forest's worth. Adelaide is a ranger. He has the sharpest eyes in the forest, and he used to be a hunter. But now, thanks to Regua, he has a full-time job, and his exceptional skills are used for protection rather than destruction. 
He's also got himself a reputation as being one of the best bird guides in South America, and he helps the tourists who visit the reserve on their quest for wildlife. It's a veritable hot spot here, so if you want to experience it yourself, there's a lodge to stay in and 470 species of bird to point your binoculars at. The best news is, it's actually growing. Nicholas and his team have planted 280,000 trees already. And they've got plans for 90,000 more this year alone. Mauricio collects seeds from the forest. And green-fingered Marley grows them on in the nursery. Then, when they're strong enough, they're planted out on hills degraded by years of agriculture. And the recovery can begin. Each tree is protected forever. And the children are coming to learn, enjoy and appreciate the natural world that will one day be theirs to take care of. I see the, the change as, as they're walking and it's so rewarding to see that uh, uh, children come not exactly knowing what they're expecting but uh, the excitement when they see frogs, uh, when they see capybaras and the odd caiman uh, diving into the water. It's, it's, it's a feeling of, of happiness. I, I feel that uh, children and youngsters uh, somehow discover happiness, happiness in, 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 in witnessing this miracle of life. These are the future guardians of the forest, but the present is down to us. If we want better soils, if we want clean air, if we want quality water, we have to restore forests. We have to plant more trees. These, this is how nature works. Like Nicholas says, Without the forest, we'll live on a dried up old rock. And there won't be a lot to love about the world. But it's love that runs regular. Love combined with passion, commitment, dedication, and above all, belief that this precious pocket of Atlantic rainforest is already making a difference. I don't know about you, but I'm going to support them. Visit if I can, or send some cash. I think they deserve it.